Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor tutorials. We do a new one every single week. And this week we are doing heart hands. Uh, we have Keenan here working cameras. Hopefully you know who he is by now. Hello, I'm in the background usually <laughs> saying random things. He provides us with facts that are sometimes accurate. He also asks questions and tells me where to move my stuff so you guys can see good I'm, angles. I'm glad you emphasize that are sometimes accurate <laughs> facts. <laughs> they are sometimes. <laughs> um, also, there's some noise going on in the background. That's just construction. Please ignore it. We're trying so hard to have a normal <laughs> sounding set. We're doing our best here. <laughs> we can't control the outside world. Okay. Um, hard hands. So, supplies. Oh, let me get my sheet of paper. Did We're using five colors today. So, we are using black, and we are using emerald green, and we are using yellow ochre, and we are using orchid. Oh, my colors all mixed together. That's okay. But let me let me get you some fresh orchid here. There we go. Orchid and pink. So those are our five colors. We are going to do this project in four-ish steps. Um, now I do want to say that with hands and skin tones, it's a little bit more, this is a little bit more difficult. Um, so I will, I'm going to like try my very best to explain, if you've done the skull tutorial, it's gonna be that similar things where like, I'm gonna talk about a lot of value and the values relating to each other to create form. Um, if you're a very, very beginner and this is just too overwhelming for you, that's okay, don't stress, don't feel bad about yourself. You can move on to a different tutorial, but I, I, I know that quite a few of you have been wanting to know how to do skin tones, so I'm gonna give it a shot. Nice. And we'll see how it goes. I believe in you. Okay, thank you. And you, the viewer, I also <laughs> believe in you. I believe in both, I believe in all. I believe in all. Actually, I think it says that on the box. Their subscription box. Oh, it says you're good at this. Oh, the, the lettering one says we believe in you. Which Nicole's is so does. uplifting. It is. She's so great. Um, we are, oh, the supplies. So I went over the colors. The paint brushes that we're using are round six and around two. They are our Princeton Heritage Series. They're our go-to brushes. We pretty much use them for about 90% of our projects. Um, so if you want to buy these little bad boys, it's worth it. Because I try and use the same brushes um, so you guys can get used to them. Same with the palettes or paints or whatever you need, paper. Um, <clears throat> so we are going to do, oh, steps. It's fine, it's fine. I haven't done this a billion times. <laughs> this isn't our 200th tutorial or anything. Well, it hasn't been a billion, but <laughs> it has been close to 150. Yeah. Okay, so step number one is we are going to do a light value wash over the entire hands. Step two, we'll do a medium value. Step three, we'll do put in our dark values. And step four, we're gonna have to be repeating those layers quite a few times. I don't want to say that like, in exactly four layers of values, you will have your hands because that's not how it works. You kinda, your, our painting will inform as it goes. So our very last step is I just put repeat until done. Desired effect is achieved. Yes. Repeat until desired effect is achieved. That's great, Keenan. So that could be uh, more layers for you. That could be less layers for you. We'll find out. Let's do this together. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Okay. So we're gonna do our outline and then our oath and then our uh, warm ups. So for your outline, oh, and this was our outline contest Winners, so if you don't know, we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor, and we had a contest going, I think it was in the month of November, where people could submit outlines, and then I got to choose one and paint a project around it. So this outline was created by Marissa Charbau? 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 I'm sure one of those is correct. I'm so sorry. 
Looks like Charbo. Charbo. But I could also say Charboth. <laughs> so I'm not sure. <laughs> Marissa, we're just going to... Marissa, thank you for this outline. And actually, this was a fun challenge for me because um, the outlines didn't come with reference photos. So I just had this to go off of. So in terms of going like values and shading and actual colors, I was kind of making it up as I go. Um, but anyways, Marissa, thank you. Everybody, thank you for participating. I hope you had fun doing it and we can keep doing fun challenges like that. And um, maybe your outline could be in the box. So that would be a fun little thing. So. Our outline can be found in the subscription box or with the kit if you purchase this. Or it can be found on our website. You can download this for free. I use graphite paper to transfer. So you're gonna take your graphite paper. It is in your Let's Make Art Matter postcard if you have the subscription. And you are going to do dark, shiny side down. And whatever mark you make on your outline, it's gonna show up on your paper. Now, I usually use felt tip markers to trace because, one, they're usually colored so I can see where I have, um, I can see where I've outlined. And also, they have a natural softer tip. So try and do light pressure. And you can check it as you go. That's why I tape my outline down so I can lift up and check. If you don't tape it down, you, then you'll just be doing a lot of uh, moving. Or, yeah, your paper will move a lot. Am I making sense? <laughs> it's fine. Your hands will be dancing, and your paper will be dancing. <laughs> Tell me if it gets too loud on that construction on your end, Keenan. Okay. If we have to pause a little bit. Here's something. Put my second headphone down. What? It is pretty loud. Is it pretty loud? Gosh dang it. I mean, now it just sounds like you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> Now they know that we're filming yeah. and they're just being loud. They go, Sarah and are down there. <laughs> well, we'll just keep on, keep on keeping on. And uh, if we got to pause for a minute, if it's especially loud, we can. Okay. So after the outline is done, you put it to the side. And I threw my paper. Hold on. Oh, okay. A little bit harder for me to bend over these days. A good stretch. Okay, uh, let's do our oath. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I like starting with that because no matter what stage you are, there's a tendency to um, compete with people that you're painting with, thinking that yours has to look exactly like theirs, yours has to be better. You kind of like define your value with how good your painting turns out. And that's not, that's not what it's all about, my friends. It's not about being the best. It's about creating and having fun doing it and maybe learning something along the way. That's what it's about. Um, okay, so for our warm ups, I'm gonna go over um, two specific things. One is value. Value is all about the lightness and darkness of a color. So when we talk about um, light and dark values, which is basically our steps in this project, to get a light value in watercolor, you're just gonna grab a little bit of paint. So they can see my palette, right? Yes. Okay. So if I wanted to do a light value, I'm gonna get my paintbrush wet, hit it off the side of the cup, and just kind of dip my, the tip of my paintbrush in a little bit of paint like so, and this is a light value. And then to get a medium value, I'm gonna grab a little bit more paint. And then to get a dark value, I'm gonna grab a lot of paint. So here's a light, medium, and dark value. Now there is a balance of how much water you put on your brush. What I tend to do is I tend to get my brush wet and hit the actual bristles off the side of the cup. 
So it's just a damp brush, not that it's dripping or sopping or anything like that. Okay, and then the next thing that we're gonna go over is um, the color wheel and the use of complementary colors. Um, because these are all vibrant colors and we're doing skin tones. Now, there's two, two things I wanna tell you. One is we are using liquid watercolors, which are naturally um, a vibrant color because they're dye-based. When you're doing skin tones and you have maybe non-dye based colors, so if you have some tubes or you have some cake pans, I would suggest maybe trying those um, because um, you might get frustrated working with the super vibrant colors when you're mixing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because they're just really vibrant, so like the pinks and the purples and the greens might stick out too much where we want to do more neutral tones since they're skin tones. Not saying that it's impossible, but if you get frustrated, that could be what it is. It's just these are naturally very vi vibrant. Um, the second thing that I want to say is that our minds really like to play tricks on us when we're painting. And that's why I think people have a hard times with hands and faces, particularly when they're drawing or painting, because our um, Brains recognize those so much because we look at them a lot. They're a, they're a, we talk to people, we look at our hands. Our brain's like, oh, I know what those look like. And then you try and draw it or paint it. And then you're like, what the freak? Yeah, how did I get those bulbous <laughs> fingers? Yeah, like, and it's just because your mind likes to assume things. So um, when you see a face, you're like, oh, I know a face. I can totally draw a face. But um, there's so much form to our faces and our hands. Um, that our brain doesn't always register, and so that's why people get really frustrated. But I wanna tell you that, like, um, kind of take take a step back from the fact that these are hands, don't focus on those too much, and try and, like, focus on it in terms of just, like, form. So if you can, like, sit and paint a flower or a lamp or whatever exactly how it is, in terms of value and form, then you can absolutely do a face, you can absolutely do hands. It's the same exact principles, you just have to like turn your brain off a little bit more. Does that make sense? So don't get too intimidated by this. Um, but because our brain likes to play tricks on us so much is especially when we're painting skin tones, we'll put like a color down and we'll be like, well, I do not have pink a pink blotch spot on my arm or whatever. I just wanna say <laughs> that because we're mixing colors, different colors are gonna pop up, but it, give yourself, <laughs> that is so darn loud. Give yourself a little bit of space to understand that it's still gonna communicate as a skin tone. So if, even if I'm looking at my reference here, like there are p spots of like straight purple and pink right here on my hands, right? When you're painting and laying this down, it's gonna stick out a lot to you and you're gonna freak out. But don't do that because you probably didn't really notice those color spots until I pointed them out. I didn't notice till you were like, I have a pink splotch on my hand, what am I gonna do? Yeah. And I was like, what colors are in those hands? Yeah, so if you look closely, there's lots of different, I have some strong undertones of green and yellow, I have strong undertones of pink and purple, but when they're like, if you hold it from like far away and take a step back from it, it's not as noticeable. So I'm just telling you that while you're painting this, your mind is gonna be playing tricks on you and yelling at you being like, that's not right. And I'm just gonna tell you to like persevere and keep going. Okay. Plow through. Plow through. It's a snow reference because <laughs> there's a lot of snow in there's the There's a lot of snow. <laughs> okay, so for mixing colors, this is a lot of warm up, but I'm just, I really want, I don't want you guys to like be so mad at me if I can't communicate this correctly. Um, so we're working with complementary colors here. So we have purple and yellow. And if you mix those together, and the, of course they all bled together already. Let me get some more ochre. Um, here, let me explain it like this. This is a color wheel. Oh. <laughs> Even how you drew that, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Line straight through. Make it into thirds real quick. Add a line. Make it nope. into thirds. Wait, how do I get just six spaces? <laughs> Pizza. Okay, I'm going to do. Pizza. Two, three, four. Five, six, right? Nailed it. Okay, great. <laughs> What's so funny is you've drawn this so, so many, many times. So many times. Okay, if, this, if you don't have a color wheel, you can make one. <laughs> so you do six spaces. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Now, there is some controversy over the color wheels. Okay, because there's two different types. There's RGB, which is doing red, orange, yellow, green, and then there's CMYK, which is um, if you do magenta, uh, cyan, yellow. So there's two different theories on um, color theory and wheels and what the primary colors are. I don't get, I think both work. You know what I mean? I'm like, live and let live. Yeah. It can work for They're both. They're really similar in color. Like, let's, let's just calm down, yeah. everybody. Please. Please. So I'm doing this just for basic, but if you were to do magenta and uh, cyan and yellow in here, that would work too. You can mix red using cyan and yellow, mm. which is how printers do it, actually. Interesting. Yeah, my printer takes a magenta and cyan and yellow and makes all the colors from those. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. So anyways, um, okay. But what we're going to use for this is we're just going to be working on the complements to tone it down. So we have purple and the complement of whatever the complement is, is what's across on the color wheel. So if, if I'm painting and my purple is too strong, I'm going to mix my yellow or yellow ochre in there to tone that down. I have pink, which is kind of going to kind of be my red. So to tone that down or to tone green down, I will use um, their complements. And same for the blue and the orange. We don't have blue, so that won't be a huge problem. Um, but these four are the main ones that I'm going to be using to mix. I also have a little bit of black in there to help with um, desaturating color because black, when you mix it in with colors, will automatically desaturate it and kind of gray it out. Um, I try not to use it a lot, but with skin tones and these vibrant, vibrant colors, I think it's okay. All right, so let's get started. Let's do this. It's time to start. Step one, we're going to do a light, really, really light value. So I'm going to mix like a tannish color. I would also like to say that I saw in some comments that people wanted me to show at the same time how to mix other skin tones during this tutorial. I'm not gonna do that because, <laughs> um, because I don't have a set formula. Um, some people do. Some people have a set formula for different skin types and um, ethnicities. I, I don't, I just go off of uh, reference photos. So, um, but maybe at another time we'll do a skin tutorial um, that has different tones of skin in them. But for this one, I'm just gonna try and simplify it and keep it to the one. Okay, so I'm just gonna start mixing some colors together. So I have my pink and my ochre and my uh, orchid ran together to make this, which is like a blush, but a desaturated blush, which is not too bad. I'm gonna grab a little bit of emerald and put that in there and see what that does. Okay, so it's, it's still too green. So I'm gonna grab some of this that I have here and mix that in there. And now I'm kind of starting to get my neutral brown. And if you want to test colors before you put them down, you can. So if I were to just take this, that's a good neutral tan color. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to get my brush wet, hit it off the side, just pick up a little bit of paint because this is a light wash. And I'm just going to fill in my hands. And this part I'm just going to work fairly quickly because this is our first layer. Um, it's not like 
has to be perfect. I'm, and I'm also gonna try and work quickly so I don't have lots of blooms. I want this to try and be smooth. If you have a bigger paintbrush than around six, you are more than welcome to use it. Is your left hand cold? Yeah. Because it hasn't been in the way at all. <laughs> it's in my pocket. <laughs> What do you think they're doing up there, if you had a guess? Well, because our office space didn't pass the inspection, they're probably breaking the ice off the roof so they have a safe place to work so they can take down the scaffolding to put a ladder on the wall. Okay. Wow. So that is what I would guess. <laughs> Kevin's like, well, let me tell you exactly what they're doing. Okay, also, because we're mixing these colors, this one is a slightly different color than this one. But because this is my first layer, I'm not stressing too bad. You know what I mean? If it was like purple and yellow difference, then I would be like, well, wait, let's even that up. But this is similar enough that I'm like, oh, it's fine. I was actually going to ask if you were concerned with, because I, I noticed on the bottom of the hand that there's more shading. So I was, was going to ask if you were concerned how light it was. Yeah, there. there is a little bit of a darker value right here compared to everything else. That's not going to bother me because we're still in our first layer. It's still light enough that I don't think it's going to be distracting. Um, but if it was too dark, then I would probably want to lighten that up. This is great. This is great. Okay. Okay. So this is my first layer. Step one, done. Good job. Now I, I'm going to say that um, hands are all about... How do, <sighs> Continue. <laughs> okay. This might get a little loopy for a second, but follow along with me. Okay. If you look at a hand and you feel the hand and you like are looking back and forth, there's a lot of form to your hand. It's not flat. Even on your palm, which is the flattest surface, there's different muscles going on. And um, that's why this is a little bit more complicated sometimes is um, because they're smaller but have so much form to them, there's so much value to communicate in order to convince that this is a three-dimensional thing on a paper. Um, so what I can foresee you guys getting hung up on is if we do not effectively communicate the different values in this hands, they're gonna look super funky shaped, okay? So I just wanna take a second and point out where we have our darker values on our hand. So we have it at the top of our hand, the bottom and top of the fingers, the bottom and top of our thumbs, and also this weird part. I don't know what this is called. Just space. <laughs> Final frontier. <laughs> Kenan will look it up for me. Um, so just like take a second. And honestly, what I did when I was painting this project, since I just had an outline, outline and I didn't have a reference photo for how the lighting was, is I had to use my hands as a reference while I was painting this um, to see if I could help. So the nice thing about painting hands is you always have a reference handy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did you get that pun? I did. That's why I did. Okay. That's why I did it. I was giggling. I felt like that was a pity giggle. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I'm more I'm more secure than that. It's fine. All right. So now I'm going to go this is pretty much dry. I'm going to go onto my second layer. And I'm going to keep pulling from this kind of tan mixture that I have going for me. And I'm just going to grab more of that paint as I do this next layer. So I'm going to kind of be following my outline. And putting this next layer here. Now what I like to do is immediately after I put that down, I rinse my brush. And I'm going to blend it out. 
so it's not super boxy. You see how that kind of blends a little bit better so it's not a perfect edge. So I'm going to do that same thing kind of section by section. So I have the top of my hands here. After I put that in, I'm going to rinse and blend. This is a knuckle that's popping out. So there's going to be a little bit of a shadow there. I'm glad I looked this up. Okay. It's really interesting. Okay. Let me read it for you. Okay. The distance between the thumb and index finger is called a perlicue. Perlicue? Perlicue. Okay. It's not the space between the fingers. And interdigital folds are skin. Again, not the space between the fingers. So, this is the perlicue, and whoever wrote this was very determined to make that clear. So he's saying this is called perlicue, not <clears throat> space between fingers. Correct. Okay. Now we're going to do our shadow on our perlicue here. And you can even feel the shape of yours. You can see that it's kind of curved. See, it's like a triangle soft curve. So I'm kind of mimicking that. And basically the reason why it's a darker value is because there aren't any bones there. So our bones and our muscles are what pokes out. This is just skin. So that's why it's a darker value because it's farther away from us. This part is farther away from us than this part. This part is farther away from us than this part. You see that? You see? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they really want to be safe out there. <laughs> They're really getting that ice. Now, at this point, you're going to start noticing colors and things. Um, and the biggest thing, the best thing to do is just to notice it and then address it. So it's just like, okay, now that I'm starting to put down more values, even though um, this is still the beginning part, and so I shouldn't make any harsh judgments about my painting yet, I am noticing that my under layers are really yellow. And so when that happens, and once you notice it, all you have to do is grab the yellow's complement and just be like, okay, let's, uh, let's put a little bit of purplish pink in there just a little to kind of like balance out that yellow. And if you just want to do that on the next go around of values, you can if you want to do it right then. I do a little bit of both. Sometimes I'm like so impatient that I'm like, let's just put it in now. And then other times I'm like, oh, I'll address that in a minute. Then there's going to be... I have a hand fact. Okay. The hand is attached to the arm by the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great fact. Okay. We're getting close to having our second layer of values painted on and done. And I just want you guys to take a second and look. Even though this isn't fully worked up yet, it's starting to have way more form than this one. Mm -hmm. Just the second layer of values already. Now the fingers behind our first finger are actually going to be a little bit darker because they're farther away and they're shadowed. So we gotta put that in there. Okay, what I just did, this was probably a little bit too dark, too dark for everything that's happening. Um, so I'm just gonna lighten it a little Okay, so I just took a little bit of water and lightened that up. Not that, it's probably gonna end up going darker than that, but like it would have messed with my, my sense of form too much to have such a dark value introduced so soon. Also, I'm going to say that I have painted outside of the lines already. Don't stress about things like that. Like, it's gonna be okay. 
Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna go and start putting in Perlicue. And then take some water and blend it out And I'm going to introduce a little bit of more pink and purple into this mixture because this brown is way more toned down than this. So I want to try and match the colors a little bit better. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of pink in there. That was loud. But one thing I want you guys to notice is how light in value these layers are that I'm doing. I'm working with a lot of water and I'm not saying a lot of water as in I have a lot of water on my brush. I'm saying I don't have as much paint on my brush um, because I want to work in thin layers, thin washes, light washes. There's a little knuckle here. And I'm just kind of blending, blending these shadows out. The one on the left has had a rough summer. <laughs> okay so what okay so that's a good point so at this point you're like okay these are definitely two different skin tones but if I were to like separate them the one to me that actually looks more accurate is the one on the left the one on the right is seeming a little bit too like uh did you know faded yeah, it's two. I like the hints of colors on the left one better than the ones on the right. So even though like next to each other, this one looks so much more vibrant, if I were to separate them, I feel like this one's a little bit more accurate. This is also a personal preference too, because you're like, listen, I don't like hints of strong color when I'm painting skin tones. Well, then, you know, add some black and gray it all out. Not a big deal. You're the artist. So I'm going to grab some yellow ochre and orchid and pink and try and bring a little bit more color to my right hand. Now, what you want to be careful to do, even while you're blending and adding layers of value, is there's still some areas that we want to keep pretty highlighted, and they're mainly going to be kind of right here. That's where we want to keep the values too light. Um, I mean, our values lighter. So, so when you're blending out, you might want to like go across the entire thing and you can do that for the first couple of layers but then as we go towards more the last couple of layers don't do that we want to keep that light value really light okay that feels better to me this one still is maybe a little bit more saturated but not as much i think a lot of it is that strong orange edge i can put that on this one if i want or if you don't want don't do it Okay. Okay, so good job. We're just gonna keep on going. It's that same thing, doing another layer with slightly darker 
value, but still a thin layer. Does that make sense when I say that? A darker layer of paint? So it's going to be a darker value that we're putting down, but still a light wash. So I'm not going to take, so it's going to be darker than what I just put down, so I'm going to mix a little bit more color into my mixture. That's way too much black, but that's okay. Um, but it's still, it's not going to be the darkest value like how we did our warm-ups. Okay, so it's not going to be, we're still working within this range. We're not going here. But I'm still changing the value by putting a little bit more color into it. I'm just not going this kind of color. You know what I mean? This kind of value. Okay. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. And I'll, if you want, I can, I can show you why if you, I'm going to mess up a part just to like sh try and illustrate what I'm doing here. If I go really dark and I'm just like trying to mix the darkest color I can, kind of like how I did in the warm up, look how dark this is. Too dark. So that's what I mean by we're going to go slightly darker, but and do a slightly darker value, but not that dark. Okay. Oh, it's almost like it never happened. Okay. So I mixed a little bit more yellow, or yellow ochre. I mixed a little bit more um, orchid. I mixed a little bit more pink, and I mixed a little bit more black into my palette. And you can test the color here before you lay it down. That's probably a little bit too gray for me. Too much black. So I'm going to put a little bit more pink in there. A little, tiny bit of green to tone down the pink. Okay, you see how that has a little bit more color than that? That feels better to me. And you can just keep on, keep on playing with it. I feel kind of, I feel good in this region. So, do the same thing. We're going to follow our shadows. Here we got a knuckle poking out. And you can see too, some people's um, veins or tendons on their hands are super pronounced. Some of them are not. You can, um, you can kind of just look at your hands, and I know that it, it sounds weird, but like, just take a minute and like flex your hands and move it around and see how the different tendons move. See how your veins move across those tendons. See how your knuckles poke out. Look at how the light hits your knuckles and how between your knuckles, there's a little bit of a shadow because your knuckles stick out. So this would be a darker value. This would be a lighter value right on the top of your knuckles. So just like, Seriously, study your hands for a minute. It's very satisfying. It is. And actually, I learned to draw. The thing I probably drew the most when I was younger was my hands because I always had it right there. So I drew my left hand so many times mm. because I would just put it on the desk like this and just sit and draw. So it's great practice, and it's hard, but um, it's, it's just a great thing to, um, to work on. Also, all of the different <laughs> backgrounds that you can do with left hands, like, I, don't, I ran out of ideas after a while. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because I'm like, what can I do with the just left, left hand? hand in different you scenarios. can only do like a left hand on a table like so many times. Then I started putting things in my hand. <laughs> and then I was just like, like I'm out of ideas. Your left hand robbing a bank. Yeah. <laughs> holding a Kleenex, holding a pencil, holding a flower. <sighs> but it was great practice and I always had it I mean and it would be a great thing to do with if you had a lamp 
also to understand shadow and value. So if you use your left hand and then adjust the lighting on it in different ways, and even if you're not even drawing in it, even just like sitting and looking at that is super helpful in understanding how shadow works and understanding how form works. We should have tried to get like a, f a form of your hand and put, added it into the subscription box. <laughs> A so mold. They also had, yes. That's their bonus project. Here's a Sarah's mold of hand. Sarah's left hand. <laughs> okay. Now, when we get closer, we're getting kind of closer to defining our forms and our fingers a little bit more. Um, when that happens, I'll probably do a little bit more of hard edges around here to define the different fingers because there's layers of fingers going on over here. I'm not going to do that just yet, which is why this is looking a little bit funky, but know that we will. So um, just be patient. So calm down is what I'm <laughs> And you can see that I'm kind of like ignoring the spots where these fingers meet. I'll define those a little bit better as we get closer to the end. But I'm kind of starting to put in like the little finger bends a little bit, the wrinkles. Okay, same thing on this side. Blend. And what I really wanted to do, and I wish that I would have done, is I wanted to bring in some reference photos of different artists and how they communicate skin and tones in different mediums, in watercolor, um, in oil painting, all of this stuff, because there are different ways that you can communicate the same thing, um, especially with watercolor and especially when you're playing around with shadows and stuff, like maybe I shouldn't even say this since I don't have examples, so it might be frustrating too, but like some artists use straight blue and navy and things like that to communicate like shadows on a person. And um, I just wanted to show you that there's, there's different ways to communicate the same thing and it just comes down to personal preference. For me, I like to use a little bit of stronger color even when I'm communicating natural things because um, that's what's visually appealing to me. But there are some artists who are into like super realism um, whose skin tones are very neutral and very desaturated and um, they don't use color as much, but there's still, there's still a good amount of color in there. Um, so I just want to show you that there's not like a wrong or a right way. And if you want to take some time to like, you know, Google watercolor portraits or watercolor skin tones and you can just see right there, there's different ways that people approach them, and I don't want to sit there and, and tell you that there's a right or a wrong way, because there isn't. It's just whatever you like. Okay. And now our forms are starting to emerge. Our hands, the shape of our hands. I was just going to say how fun this has been to watch form up, because yeah. it's, it's so neat. It, and so this is where, at this point, we're starting to be like, okay, okay, I can see that this is a three-dimensional thing. And you're like taking a little breath, and you're like, that, it, it's going to be okay. So, so don't give up before this point, because this is really where things start to like poke out and recede and create shapes. Okay. Um, and I'm just gonna blend the nails in. Now for the nails on this, I really didn't do anything special because um, even though in our heads we might think that nails are white, they're not white 
at all. Um, there's, they're multicolored. They're very similar to, for mine, they're really similar to my skin tone. Um, that's not true for everybody. I have a lot of purple and pink on my nails with the very edge being like not, it's still not pure white. And you can just compare your nail to a white piece of paper and just be like, oh yeah, it, it totally blends way more in with my hand than anything else. So some people like to leave nails alone and not really like, and just leave them white. I do not do that. I usually just like blend the colors around onto the nails. Mine are like red. Do you have redder? I think I have more red skin. Yeah. And different skin tones have different undertones of skin. Now I'm, I'm very fair and I have undertones of coolness, which means my undertones on my skin are green and blue. So you can see, you can see my veins. And if you're good at like makeup and stuff, it's true for the same thing where like um, some people have um, warmer undertones on their skin and that will inform what makeup you wear and what colors look really good on you. Um, and some people have, and I have cooler undertones because of my fairness. So um, I'm a winter for makeup and clothing. A winter? <laughs> a winter. <laughs> wow. So it's the same, like, it's just funny how color theory affects so many things, not only art, but in what we wear and what colors look good on us. Like, my husband has um, warmer undertones, and so, like, um, like green looks really great on him. It brings out the green in his eyes and browns look really great on him because it brings out that oliveness of his skin. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So it's just like different. Interesting. Yeah. Jessie looks really great in like a blush or a pink because it brings out that blush and yeah. pink in her cheeks. You know, like yeah. it's just fun. Just Gosh, different that ways. Is fun. Yellows don't look great on me because I have, of how fair I am, or tans, which is what I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. All right. We're going to keep on keeping on. Do another layer. We're now getting to the point where we can be a little bit more um, careful about the shadows that we put in. I'm going to put, I'm going to use a little bit more gray in this mixture simply be to tone down my hands a little bit. Keenan, you should like, there's like quizzes you can take that will tell you what your colors are. I've Googled it before. What do you mean? Like you can just be like, how do I tell if I'm a how do I tell if I'm a summer or a winter? And then it's just like, they'll tell you like where to look. Where it's like, if you can see blue underneath your wrists or something, then you're most likely, you have cooler undertones. And then it will even tell you what colors you should wear. your color season. Yes. Yeah, like Michael's a good fall. He does good with those like warm tones. Warm and like deep. I don't know. I feel like I'm now contradicting everything I'm saying. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. I'm fine. <laughs> this site has a lot of words. <laughs> okay, you don't have to do it. I'm just saying for you and for anybody watching, if you want to know what your color seasons are, you can just Google Okay, it. skin tone, cool. Against white, my skin appears to have pink, red, or blue undertones. In direct sunlight, the veins on my arm appear blue. I may sunburn easily. That's me. That's Sarah. Well, what? Warm. <laughs> Against white, my skin appears to have yellow or golden undertones. In direct sunlight, the veins on my arm, arm appear green. I may tan easily. That, I think that's you. I tan easily. Yeah. Then it goes into eyes, then your hair. I'm, I think I'm mostly warm. Yeah. My eyes are cool. They're more green, blue. I 
was hoping it'd be like a quiz. <laughs> They're like, what's your favorite drink? You're a winter. <laughs> <laughs> Hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. Well, that was easy. Okay. So I used a little bit more black in my shading in this last one. And it, for me, it toned down the color too much. So I went back in and I added a little bit more pink. This, I just want to say this process is totally natural. While you're painting and you're like, okay, now it's too brown, now it's too yellow, now it's too green. Every artist experiences that. You're not doing it wrong. It's just about adjusting to that then. So you're just like, okay, instead of getting mad and being like, oh, this is, now my hand looks like it's dead. I'm done with this. I'm not good at this. I'm like, okay, what can I do to bring a little bit more life back into that hand? Okay, I'll put more of this color in. So like, don't get mad at yourself if it's reading too much one color. Every artist goes through that. You just need to adjust to it. Not a big deal at all. You're still reading. Are you learning anything? Well, I found a, a quiz, but I'm not good enough with knowing what I look like in a yellow or orange shirt. <laughs> so I might get mixed signals here. This other, this step says, place a piece of plain white paper next to your freshly washed face. How does your complexion look? The first answer is pretty bad. The complexion <laughs> is sallow and dull. Why did you make me do this? <laughs> That's funny. People are funny. Why did you make me do this? Okay, and I, and I want to point out that because we're doing so many layers, you're going to have these kind of hard edges a little bit. That is natural. That is part of watercolor. If you're used to other mediums like oil and stuff, you can blend them out a little bit easier. Watercolors, those edges, um, for me, I don't mind them. So I kind of blend them out, but I'm not like focus so more so much on making sure everything is perfectly smooth sometimes i let those hard edges happen a little bit um so like don't don't freak out and because um i don't i don't know i think it's kind of cool sometimes that that you can actually see the different layers of value on a watercolor that again it all goes back to um, preference, preference of style. And this is one of those things where people are like, well, how do I know what my style is? Well, what do you naturally like? Like everybody has natural tendencies to different things. There's not a right or wrong answer. Okay, I feel really good about how this is building up. I think I'm, gonna, I'm ready towards getting um, to the last layer. And so basically on this last layer, what I'm gonna focus on doing is I'm gonna focus on kind of defining things a little bit more, which means I'm not gonna blend them out as much. So I'm gonna grab some, a darker value, slightly darker. And so like when I do my fingers here, I'm gonna kind of define the, the shapes a little bit more. So if you look at, like look at my finger and look how deep that, that curve is, I'm gonna start putting in those lines. Now this shape is a little bit different than my hand. It would be pretty convenient if you moved your hand. <laughs> oh, sorry. So they could see what you're painting. <laughs> like covering it. I'm like look at how real this oh, looks. Look on my hand. <laughs> But, I'm, but just kind of start defining these little wrinkles a little bit more. And I'm going to put a little edge on my, my nails. You can put your um, knuckle wrinkles in too.
And this is also one of those paintings. It's going to look better from farther away. So just so kinda... hang that right next to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> yeah. So just like um, take frequent steps back from this painting or like before you decide if you hate it or you love it. Just like walk away from it, put it up, leave the room, come back, take a look at it. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And if you want to do this more detailed part with the two, you can. Putting in your kind of... And you can see, like, I went outside of the lines on this, but, like, that's a... I'm not going to freak out about this mark. Me trying... Do you see how I went outside here? Can they see that clearly? Sometimes trying to fix that would actually bring more attention to it than just leaving it alone. So if it's... I did it a little bit on this side, too. I'm just going to leave those. I'm going to be like, listen, it is what it is. You're probably not even going to notice it. Me trying to fix it would probably actually make it more pronounced. So we're just going to let it go. Um, there are a lot of artists when they're painting, so just like kind of going off your, your like seasons and stuff and skin tones. Um, a lot of people, I know especially with oil, I haven't done as much research with watercolor, but for oil painting skin tones, they'll do under paintings of that color. So since my undertones are blue for the most part, they would actually, when they go to paint my face, they would do a light blue across my entire face and then they'll start putting like neutrals and pinks and stuff in. So like that's very common in painting to do undertones of whatever skin tone the undertones are. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So it could be purple, it can be green, it can be blue, it could be pink or red because everybody's skin tones are different. Wow. Yeah, it's really cool to watch. And our, our skins actually, skin tones, have a lot more blue and green in them than you um, might not, what am I trying to say? They have more than you think. I didn't use, I use a lot of yellow ochre and a tiny bit of green because this green is very vibrant, but it's pretty interesting. Okay, and now I'm just going to kind of define the different finger edges here. I'm not going to go too crazy with detail. And then now is kind of where you take a step back and I'm like, man, this is, this is looking, how's it looking from the top? Is that looking good? It looks awesome. Okay, I'm going to do slightly darker value on this side right here. And then I think, oh, 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 sorry. Bless you. Thank you. And then I think I'm just going to uh, be done with it. Now I just kind of let them fade into nothing, the arms here, they're just floating. If you want to continue those arms to the end of the page, you're welcome to. I don't, I don't get scared about floating objects. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. So that's why I don't stress it a lot. There are some people that really stress out about those kinds of things and that's okay, that's their right. Okay, we're done. We did it, you guys. Good job. Let's see. It, yeah, while I, was, <laughs> while I was painting this, I was looking at the outline and I was like seriously trying to, I was like going off their outline shadows and I was trying to adjust the light on my hand to like mimic that so I could paint a little bit. I think next time maybe I'll be like, please include a reference photo along <laughs> with the outline <laughs> so I can get the colors right. But 
Uh, if you guys did this, good job. This is a difficult, difficult um, thing to paint. Skin tones are no joke, but that doesn't mean that you can't try it and just putting yourself out there. And maybe you'll find that like skin tones are just easier for you to do and that's okay. Maybe you'll find that you're not ready to do this project yet and that's okay too. Um, just remember it's a piece of paper and this is all about learning and having fun. So if it doesn't turn out, don't be mad at yourself. Just be like, okay, I'm just going to throw that in the trash, pretend that didn't happen and just move on to something else. Nothing wrong with that. I've done that plenty of times. If you're on Instagram, tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. We have a Facebook community that I talked about earlier called Let's Make Art Watercolor. You can see what other people are making. You can ask for tips. People ask questions there. Um, it's just a great way for you to connect with other people who are kind of in a similar situation than you. Um, and if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. That's all I got to say. Goodbye.